The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. We're back. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. And uh, when we're looking at uh, the market, that gap up on Friday was really quite an important thing because it got the, uh, the Qs and the SMHs and even the S&P so close to areas that I had said before, we're getting into resistance area but getting to all-time highs is really an incredible thing. But when it happens in a V-shaped pattern, you've got to get a, a, maybe just a little pullback. And then it almost immediate, maybe in daily charts, it wouldn't be more than three days. I'd say a week would be too long if it was too deep. But if it's just sideways, and then it needs to break out because you want that V-shaped pattern. V-shaped patterns are far more um, power-intensive then the cup. Why? Because in the cup, you keep having a little bit of a, a stall, and then you move up, a little stall, and you move up, and you keep making these higher level areas of support. But at the same time, you use usurping a lot of energy to do that. In a V-shape, it means you've got such torque, such dynamic thrust to the upside, <clears throat> that until you get to a point where you just hammer at a, um, let's just do this right now, let's look at the XLK, where you hammer against all-time high resistance levels, um, and then it means that you need, especially in this case here, when you've got the XLK, the S&P Select Tiger Spider Fund, going in two legs. I, I, it's almost impossible to describe. There are very few examples of this. Um, in two legs from the low of 57.57 in the XLK, Back on 26th of December, the week of the 26th of December, 57.57, a 24% decline, 24 decline from the 76.27 October high. And all of a sudden, you're looking at it did take a little longer, not very much. It took one, two, three, four weeks longer. No, sorry, three weeks longer to break above it. But... It's only at this tiny little one week peak. It's incredible. Just below the top at 75.25, one point away from the all time high, it pulls back for a week. This is what I'm talking about. You need speed with this V shaped thrust. And then the momentum of the MACD hasn't even started its decline, it is still expanding. The histogram is still expanding. Only here in this last week, did you see the slightest dip in the percentage? This is the 0% line. That's the distance between the faster moving average, the green line of the MACD, and the slow line. But it was very slight. This week, I'm suspecting you will see more of it. Why? We've gotten to a recycled leg D in the XLK. This last move up just made a peak D, another peak D in the 120-minute chart. And uh, this is, if you look at my work over here, this is the Chapman Wave Automated uh, Projections of uh, Resistance and Support, 76.78 in the daily, 77.04 in the daily, 77.87. So we're, almost, we're in this cluster of uh, resistances. If there is a spiral above 78.50, that's not just a breakout. That is not only going to all-time highs, that's basically saying, you know what, there is so much strength here that uh, it's going to maybe be a, just a sideways rectangle movement it finally has a, a, a decline. But at this particular point, you could come back to the 75, what was that, 75, uh, 25, high of the 21st of March, and that'll be the big test. Does it break under it? Does it go to the low of 70, what was that, 2? Yep, 72.34 on the 27th. Or does it go lower than that? So this is going to be very important. If you're looking at the 10, the 120 minute chart, it broke above 76.82. It's not there now, but it did that already this morning. 
uh, but that is a resistance level. And the 10 minute chart says there were no resistances above. 76.59 was the resistance. Now, some kind of a support. We've taken that out. 76.22 is key support short term. I don't have any support levels at all in any of the indices. And the weekly chart has broken out. It's above its 75s uh, resistance. And the XLK monthly chart is an 84.75. Um, all time, and now sorry, 84.75 upside monthly target as resistance. Uh, let me just check here. Uh, yeah, there's a question. Uh, just a little feedback when you do the update at noon, hard to follow everything so fast. Could you maybe only do the three major indexes and then get into the, the rest slower? <laughs> Thanks, Basil, for all you do. Yeah, I, I will try to do that. And um, I, I have a way that I was thinking that I would do it. Uh, you just confirmed for me that it's a lot of information, but you know, people may be listening, uh, TFN is all around the world, so people might just be listening to be able to garner a little bit of uh, a, a brief summation of what's going on right now. So those are the levels that I would do. And for, as far as the charts are concerned, I have my whole show in which to do the charts. I have to think it through. You know, there's a compromise between the two. Some people really just want to hear what's the news. And that's what we do at TFN. We give you what's the news, and then we, we give you the whys and wherefores based on our own methodology. Okay, let's do a couple of things here. I wanted to look at the a uh, couple of questions that have come in. I will get to them. Oh, I see something here, big heading. It says bonds. Ah, uh, good old Paul with his very uh, subtle way of asking questions. Bonds are now putting in a head and shoulders top. So let me go to the bonds, head and shoulders. I don't he never talks about what time frame, so it's never clear. But let me go, maybe it's a monthly. Uh, head and shoulders, upside down, round side out, inside way, I, I, head and shoulders. Uh, head, all right, let's just go on with the question. Uh, what head and shoulders? All right, uh, there's, there's definitely a Chapman wave a right shoulder failure pattern. That's the H pattern, the dreaded H went, went under it. Bonds are now up 530 seconds at 142 and 230 seconds. Doesn't look very good short term. Monthly charts only in a C. Probably should go to a D at some point. Going on. Uh, and it could be a major top. You probably won't mention this because you don't understand bonds. You know, Paul, that's not really a very good and accurate uh, summation and implication. I actually understand bonds very well, um, but I'm not quite sure what the implication there is. Uh, so I just want to clarify when it comes to bonds, I actually understand them pretty well. Um, and question of the dead Basil, why, why engage this person? I, I take every call because I think every call has a particular reason. Someone's taking the trouble to uh, write. It might be not necessarily particularly eloquent, but it's still worth uh, uh, perusing and looking at. It takes me to an area that I might have overlooked. And uh, now that I'm looking at it, uh, there's really not much to say. I see that, that the yields are stuck in a range for now. And uh, there's really not too much to discuss. Look, TNX is trading. Uh, it's in a leg D right now. I said that I can see it maybe going between 25 and a half, maybe even 26. And the support at 23.56 is imperative to hold on the shorter term. I haven't really changed that opinion. I'll be right back. Dow's down 85, S&P's down. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, we're back. And, you know, this is going to be very interesting. Look, the IYT, I should mention that uh, we are still along the IYT, and I shouldn't have typed it into the den. I should type it onto the chart. There we go. Trading at 194.42, down a dollar 94. That's a big. That's a big pullback. Uh, but there was a big gap from the uh, close on Thursday into the Friday uh, leap to the upside. I have this as a, as a leg C. It's still a leg C because we went from 196.36 to 196.45 this morning, and now pulling back sharply. This is going to be quite important for a number of reasons. Just as we're looking, I'm going to mix things up a little bit. Give me a little bit of time. With the XLF spikes up on Friday with a really good news on JP Morgan. Uh, WFC, Wells Fargo was not as good. Today we've got Goldman Sachs sharply lower, um, and the XLF is down 19 cents at 26.95. I would consider that this is really positive action in the XLF. I'm not saying, oh, it's positive, therefore it's going to the all time highs. What I'm saying is, that under the circumstances of yields, et cetera, under the circumstances of the financial sector, we remember it's a sector, it's even got Berkshire Hathaway, I mean, it's, got, it's called the financial, but really it's got some companies that are, have some financials, but that's not what they do mostly. Um, but if you're looking at this and you say, hey, the financials have had a move from 30.33 down to the most recent low of 22, uh, eight, eight points, that's, you know, what, 28%, 24%. That's a big move down. But all of a sudden, you're looking at some residual strength in the uh, chart since the high of the, the, the bounce up to the March of uh, high of the 19th of 2710, down to the most recent pullback of, tw of the 25s. <coughs> There's that noontime sneeze, I guess. Well, what we're looking at, it's gone to a, a new leg B. I'm calling it a leg B. Um, and I'm anticipating that there's a chance. It might take a little while, but as long as the 2638 level of the 200 period moving average, this area, it might go a little lower. I, didn't, I would not like to see it under 2610. But if this can hold and just maybe fill a little bit of the gap and then have a little bounce later in the week, thank you, um, then I'd be looking at and saying, 
Well, a very quick peak A to a peak B to a leg C says be careful because, yes, you could go to the leg D and then you could get a pullback. Now, the, the rule of the Chapman wave is a very quick A to B to C. This is peak A, peak B, peak C, and then to a D. Usually it's the B to C to D. A takes a little bit of time uh, and then has a bit more of a rest. That says that it could have a sharp pullback, but it doesn't say, oh, my God, that's the end of the move. It's going all the way back down. It just says, be careful, because now it, it, it invariably will have a bit of a rest. And that rest is either time or price or time and price. I'm thinking that it's more time and less price. This is just at this particular point. Why? Well, let's look. Uh, you remember I was talking about the IYT. That's the transport. So the reason why I went over to the XLF is because I wanted to show that within sectors, there are conflicting uh, chart formations. In the IYT, you've got the, the, the um, rails that have been doing very well. You've got some trackers good, some trackers not so good, but you've also got the airlines, which have been pummeled. So I want you to show you that the same sort of thing is happening in the XLF. Now, watch this. This is really quite fascinating. Within the XLF, you've got Goldman Sachs down sharply, down three and a quarter percent at 201.16, having made a peak D on Friday. This is an island reversal. I'm putting this in. I suspect this island reversal won't remain an island reversal for all that long, but right now it's important. But if you look at the weekly chart, you've got this Chapman wave. Uh, oval pattern has gone to peak A, then a B, and then it took some time, and then went to a C, and then a D. But the high from the 202 area, the 207, 208-ish area, that took, look how much time it's taken. It's taken a couple of months, number one. Number two is, in this particular pattern, you've just gone above the oval high. This could start to set up a pullback that says we're, moving, we're, we're using up time. This is big rectangle formation. You might have to test the 198 area, even the 196s. But there is a really good chance <clears throat> that when the assessment of Goldman Sachs, et cetera, has actually been accomplished, that the XLF based on now you've got uh, earnings tomorrow from oh, who else was there today? Uh, Goldman Sachs and someone else, uh, someone important. Uh, Goldman Sachs and someone tell me, someone tell me. Oh, there was another star. Oh, City, City. I'm sure it's City. Yep, City's down 31 cents, down 0.46 percent at 67.11. It has gone to the resistance level that I drew in the other day when I was talking about it. This is also a leg D, a very quick A, B, C, D in the weekly chart. It could have a bit of a pullback, but I have to tell you, both of these stocks are holding really well right now. I'm kind of impressed at what they're doing. So the day is young, the week is young. We've got other bank stocks coming up, Bank of America, which we are long, um, pulling back today down 152%, 1.5%, uh, 47 cents lower, 29.71. Really nice move. We're right in the Chapman uh, wave right there. Resistance uh, zone. This is the, um, the area that I call inside track repellent resistance level, pulling back from there. And it could fill the gap. I, I think at Bank of America, it's important. What if, two, re, two, two scenarios. What if Bank of America, which is, I think, just based on the techniques that are um, the prerequisites that all the banks have to have, all the different things that they have to do to, 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 to conform to whatever has been uh, committed by the, uh, the Fed that says they've got to have this and they've got to have that, they've got to have security, they've got to have X amount of capital, et cetera, all these reserves, et cetera. But wait a minute. What if Bank of America, instead of pulling back to the 29, 20, 29.02 level, the 9 and the 14 period moving average by uh, tomorrow, has an outlook that is actually a little bit better? So what they say is the earnings are okay, uh, but the outlook is we've done everything and the outlook for this next half should be better or the other way around. The earnings are a little disappointing. No, the earnings are very strong, but they're, they're a little timid in their outlook. When that settles, if the earnings are strong, that should really help the stock. Now, let's just imagine over the next two days, whatever the reason, that Bank of America, instead of trading in the 29... 30 to 29.20 area down another 50 cents or more. Tomorrow 
has a kind of a sort of a stumble at first, and then out of the blue, by the end of the day, it's climbing, 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 and by Wednesday, it's above the 30.22 high of the of the 12th, starting leg C, and by Thursday, without making a peak, it breaks above this resistance, this inside track green dash green line, and starts to trade in the 30.45, 30.50 30 area. You know, you know, you realize that what that would do. That would say that Bank of America, with this megaphone pattern in the weekly chart, has broken to the upside, rather than starting to make this uh, deadly diamond pattern, which always breaks to the upside rather than be deadly. But instead, right now, it extends leg C, and all of a sudden, the 3192 high of the 10th of March becomes a magnet. So I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying there are numbers here that are really important for me because the Bank of America closed below 29.40 says, all right, be ready for some kind of sideways pullback. But breaking out is really good. I'll be back down. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, so the question with the bonds was about a head and shoulders. And I've got, I do see a potential for inverse head and shoulders, but so far I don't see much else. Um, all right, so um, the DSX is a question. Uh, DSX is called Diana Shipping Inc. Trading at 3.13. It hit a low in the 2.40 area just uh, in mid-March. Very nice action, leg A in the uh, weekly chart. So the little joke was, uh, let's see, what was the joke? Um, 
<laughs> oh, there it is. Basil, you probably don't understand shipping, but can you take a look at DSX for me? Thanks. Yeah, I don't understand shipping at all. That's why we just missed LPG, uh, Dorian LPG, liquefied gas shipping from the uh, 5.50 uh, area, which just happened to hit 8.35. Uh, yeah, so um, good, good one. Uh, so we're looking at the uh, DSX. DSX is Diana Shipping. Nat was the one that I had spoken about for subscribers as well some time ago. We'll look at that in a moment. Yes, this is very good. This is a really good sign for the economy. This is a very subtle sign because it has to do with dry shipping. LPG was natural. It was gas uh, that was being shipped. So this is going to be very important. 313, if this is just a leg A to the upside in the weekly chart, and at some point we get a pullback and then make a leg B, it says that the 250 to 280 area is probably going to be really good support and this is just some horrible news that comes out and that maybe the shippers are starting to uh, move stuff that just was sitting there for quite a while. Let's look at NAT. This is Nordic American tankers. Yeah, it also had a very nice move from the 180s. Uh, it hit two tens. Now it's trading at 206. It's a start. This is not as good as the pattern that you have in DSX, which is Diana shipping. So yeah, I like it very much. Um, so uh, Peter says, Basil, she's running through Newton as you speak. We got a dinner, who, a tiger, whose uh, wife is running the marathon. Uh, she often runs the marathon. I think she didn't do it last year, and she's going right by my my city, Newton, as we speak. Probably just about to go to Heartbreak Hill. Oh man, that Heartbreak Hill! I remember when I used to bike, and I'm not big on bikes. I mean, uh, uphills on bikes. I haven't. Uh, ugh. I'm very good at downhill, like everybody. Okay, so I, I wish her the best of luck because this is now a beautiful, maybe it's getting too warm, but this morning, the storms here in Boston, you would not believe it. There was, I've never seen this before. I've seen rain, last year was rain and cold. This is, there was torrential and wind-blown storms this morning at about 7 o'clock. Uh, just absolutely, I mean, I went out uh, to, just for a brief moment, and I was soaked. And what I am looking at is a situation where that just lightning, thunder, heavy rain, and now it is absolutely spectacular outside and warm. So maybe it's getting too warm, but I personally prefer, <laughs> prefer warm to cold. So I wish you the best of luck. And um, it's been quite a, quite, I only saw a little bit of it. I used to be able to just... In the old days, I could just zip down the hill and go like not even a half a mile, just like a quarter of a mile to Commonwealth Avenue. I, I would just stand there for a little while watching everything and then come back uh, to the market, to my office, and go back to the market. Now they've got crops at the bottom of the hill. Uh, you can't go there unless you're biking or walking. Uh, yeah, it's unbelievable. But it's really a big fundraiser, a huge fundraiser. However, the level of the Boston Marathon has gone to such a, not everybody gets in, just I have to congratulate you to get in. People have to work really hard. I heard of someone yesterday who missed getting in by one minute. For them, the cutoff was three hours and they did three hours, one minute. They have to come back next year. So um, congratulations. I got, I got I, yeah, I'll, I'll tell the story. Way back when I lived in the back bay, I was. I, I had a school holiday when I was at the New England Conservatory of Music. Uh, there was a, the April, um, whatever day this is, was a. For some reason, it was a holiday, a school holiday. I can't remember the reason why. Anyway, I was standing. Uh, in, it was a hot day, April, and I, it was a hot day in Boston. I remember standing in a little t-shirt and shorts, and uh, corner of Newbury and uh, Exeter, and. Fairfield, sorry. And the next thing I see is a bunch of people running by me. And I was I was an athlete in my youth back in my high school days. Uh, held records and stuff, but for sprinting. Um, and I'm looking at these people, and they're running by me, and they look pretty serious. And I, 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 a cop was nearby. I said, what's going on? He says, the Boston Marathon. There were no people. They were just running along between the, between the you know, people on the sidewalk and the street. 
And it was just, there was right by the John Hanks, it wasn't, it was the Prudential when they used to finish at the Prudential before they finished about 100 yards further down at the John Hancock. And uh, it was nothing, there was nothing there. And now I, there are 30, 40,000 runners, and I don't know how they all get in. It's just incredible. I'm impressed. And I've always been impressed with long distance runners. I just could never do it. 440, I could, I did 440, but it was, in the relay where I was the, la the last runner in the, the 110, the last 110. But uh, ooh, I could never do anything more than 220 was my limit for 200 meters. All right, let's get back to the story. Natural in, uh, Nordic American, so DSX, yes, I like it. And I like, I think the group is telling us that it's very important that they are rallying right now. Boston Globe this morning had one of the first stories on the front page that I can recall seeing in I just don't know how long. What was it? It was about wages have improved to the point where some of the uh, some of the companies are, are thinking from 15, they're going to make $20 the minimum. You never saw that in the globe, ever. And, of course, there isn't one word about this administration helping to do that, but it was a very uh, an interesting article on people who are earning more, feeling it more in their pockets, and are able to do things that they've wanted to do before. Great story. All right, Dow's down 67, S&P's down 7. I want to show you something that I thought was interesting. In the, um, in the, the many charts that I sent out over the weekend, and folks, I, for, I forgot to do my Dow th uh, three time frames. I had it already way back on Saturday, and I forgot to post it because there were so many other charts. I did discuss it, but I forgot to post it. I sent it off on a special uh, uh, this morning. It came after the uh, um, opening call went out with all the different positions we have. Um, just sorry about that. Uh, now, what I am looking at is Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. Victor, how are you? Good, how you doing? I see that uh, Kronos is making a 50% uh, retracement. So do, do you buy it? And another thing, I just want to let you know, the Japan banking system is closed from April 27th until May 6th. Will that have any effect on the market? That's my second question. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, who closes? The Japan stock market closes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they do that. You know, every year they do that. But I've never known it to have any impact other than if at that point the market is going down, it will just still keep going down if it's going up. So I don't, to tell you the truth, I think the implications of China just at this particular moment have a lot more import than than, uh, than Japan, but it's very interesting. I was looking at the NK on the continuous contract last night, leg E in the daily, uh, in the weekly chart has gone to a leg C, and the monthly chart is on a leg A. And what it's done is, unlike our markets, it's had about a 50% retracement. Can you hold on? I look at Cronus because sure. I do want to do some work there because it's impacting a lot of the area. This is the cannabis sector. We'll be right back yep. with Victor in Paramus, New Jersey. We're looking at the uh, cannabis sector with Cronus Group as one of the ones we want to discuss. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when 
when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we're back. So we're looking at Cronus. Cronus is one of the real leaders. This is a Cronus group. Uh, cannabis sector it, it uh, has a low back in 2016 in the pennies I think it was 0.17 has a little bit of a thousand percent is that a thousand or ten thousand percent run to 25 no yeah to 25 10 um, not bad but now it's on its way down and one of the things I'm a little concerned about is that there was just um, how can I put it? There were there were certain stocks that were at, at at first benchmarks for the move up. Then what happened is that on every pullback, some of them failed to rally to the next step. But Cronus didn't. It continued and look at the big U-shaped patterns it made every time it ran. Look, it went to leg C in the month. It goes all the way to about 11, and then it pulls back to the fives. It's cut in half, more than half, and then it runs where to the 12 area, and then it comes back to the sixes, and then it runs where all the way to 25, and now it's getting cut in half. It's down 15, not quite half yet. So my suspicion is that it needs to test the high that was made back in uh, the week of the 21st of September. 15.30 is really going to be key. My suspicion is it's going to go kind of into that area, and then we might find that there's a sudden V-shaped bounce, but my suspicion is it's going to take a little. There's something going on here that suggests to me, now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go CGC is another one, CGC. I'm going for the ones that I see on the ticker that go by every day. Canopy growth, medical mar marijuana, same thing as Cronus, but it has already done its big pullback and has rallied once again. That went from the also in the in the well in the single digits all the way to uh, the 59 area, pulls back to 25, runs to 52, and now it's at 40. So now I'm going to say to you, so now you're looking for an entry point or re-entry point. Is that correct? Uh, uh, Victor? Oops. I think we just got cut off. Okay. So I'm sure that Victor's probably listening. So Cronus to me is in the area where it started. It's in an area where it needs to find support. There is no support based on either the, the weekly or the monthly charts until it tests the 1530s. So this is what I'm going to suggest to you. And Victor, I know that you look at these um, quite, quite intensely, but I'm going to say to you, I would put in a bid based on if you've already traded this and you've made money, 
Under those conditions, I would put a bid of a small position. I really do mean a small position, somewhere between fifteen forty and fifteen dollars. Fifteen thirty—that's kind of the area that I'm looking at. The reason why I say that is as a bid is because it's within thirty forty cents of where we are right now. It's at a really sharp pullback. I don't see it on the weekly chart showing any strength whatsoever. I don't see it showing any strength in the daily and the monthly chart is still very strong technically because it has such a big move up. And that's telling me that we could start the sideways choppy area so that there'll be moments where you're making profit on the trade and there are moments where you're going to be losing. But it's a good feeler trade. It, it doesn't even have to be a lot of shares. You just want to, you want to know how is this participating every day in the market when other areas are doing whatever they're doing? How does this particular stock in this particular group managed to hold support and i'll explain why i'm saying that the mj is having a big move down a dollar 24 3385 right now um and alternative harvest this is the cannabis cannabis sector etf we were long we've taken profits we're actually out now i'm looking at this and i'm saying that was our first big attempt at just getting into it. It wasn't a big position, but I'm saying our big attempt to start in an ETF that is really an IPO, basically. There's no real history, number one. Number two is now I have a good feeling for taking profits because we had 30% profits. We didn't take 30%. We've taken quite a bit less, but we have taken profits. I'm not prepared to give those profits up. I'd rather get another trade in and for subscribers because this is an area that I think has legs to the upside in 2019. But I've got a feeling that it's overbought for other reasons. If you look at SDZ, which is uh, Constellation Brands, holding beautifully after the uh, big move up two and a half weeks ago in the 190 area, we're looking for some kind of a pullback into the 186, 185 area to go along with uh, Greg's analysis that he did of the stock to say that that's where he'd like to get in. I said, you know what, you could do a little nibble here just to really see how it is because the way I'm looking at it, I'm not sure it's just yet ready. Now, this is very important because Constellation Brand Spirits Beer and now it's got the cannabis seg segment as well as, oh, I'm forgetting which one I want to look at. It's STZ and what's the other one? The big one. Oh, man. oh, oh this is a, a GWPH. I remember symbols better than I do the names. GWPH stuck in the sideways range at 164.69 down three. So I'm suspecting because these big ones ran up, it's a very it's the opposite of what you look in sectors at major tops where the big guys take a rest and finally the little guys come running up and then they run out of gas and then everybody comes down. This is a little bit reversed and it's saying to me that there is interest in the bigger ones but I think the whole sector just needs a little more time to digest it. So back to uh, Victor, I'm not sure if he's still on, if he can just say hi, but sometimes people just have to go because uh, they, they're uh, either at work or they um, or they just don't stay online. They like to listen. They li and I, I think that's what he was saying to me in the background there. I'd like to listen. Uh, and if you're doing that, this is a big move for uh, Cronus, going from 24 down to 15, but look, at it did, it did that in two days on the way up, and it's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, sorry, two weeks on the way up. It's taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, broke the rectangle uh, formation, eight, nine. This is the 10th week. I think there's a little more to go, but this is an area you want to keep your eye on. My subscribers know that we're keeping our eye on this as part of a, of a portfolio. But where you get in and how you keep... I was just determined we're not going to take a loss after having such a nice gain. We had to get out. We're out. Took a 12-ish percent gain on one position. Uh, we took a, another small position gain before. I'm just, I just don't want my subscribers to have something that did so well and then take a loss when you've been. It's just not the way you want it. Now we might miss the, the next entry. I'll be planning for that in a certain way. Uh, subscribers know just how I like to organize these things. So let's hope that that's the way it's going to work out. Okay, hope I answered your question, Victor. It's a good question. And the answer is, if you're waiting to get in, and I know you've been in this before, I'm not sure how much money you made, but if you have made money, have a little patience. I would much rather let it find support than just to, to guess that this is the support. And the next thing you know, 
it goes right down to the 14 or the 13s. It could do that. This sector is vulnerable on the way up. And look at the way it's vulnerable on the way down. Look at those big moves in the monthly. It gives back a 50% or more, sometimes even an 80% of the gain. So I just don't want to be messing around with this. But it is an area that I think has potential. And I spoke about that with subscribers over the weekend when I did my studies of my our various charts of what we're along and what we're looking for and what we want to be buying. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. Oh, we've got one more segment to go. I'm going to be on with uh, Tommy O'Brien tomorrow at 10. Let me just double check the new schedule because Tom's away. I'll be on with Tommy at 10 tomorrow. I'll be on with Tommy uh, Wednesday at 10. And on Thursday, to wrap up the week, because a holiday Friday, I'll be on at 3, 3 to 4, to wrap up the week. I'll be back straight after these messages. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back, and we're looking at uh, the, the uh, two-minute, five-minute, ten-minute charts. Ten-minute gave a beautiful uh, peak D right there in the two, 29.13s. We plummeted down to the 2900 level and bounced up to 29.07, then back down to the 29.02. Now we're at 29.04.50. Make it real simple. If at 3.10, between 3.10 and 3.17, if the E-mini is 10 to 11 points down or more, that says that we're probably running into, uh, uh, into Tuesday for this uh, pullback. And if there's a good rally and we can go over 2908, that's about four points higher. And 2908 takes you down just about uh, five ish points, four points. 
I would say that that's good to have just a, a, a down but narrower down close as it took a breather today. My thinking is we need a little bit more time because that was a big move up on Friday. TLRY mentioned in the, in the den. Till Ray Inc. Medical Ma Cannabis, wonderful example of the Chapman Wave Eiffel Tower or A pattern. Remember the A pattern, straight up, straight down. Da, 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 the Duke Ellington A train. This is what we've got right here. Or was that Coltrane? All right. Next thing we're looking at is a single leg A up to 300 round number high back on the 21st, the week of the 21st of September of 2018. A little pullback to the 200 period moving average around about the 46s. We're at 48.85 right now. What a move. All right, that's what you've got to be careful of. This is like treat this area a little like the biotechs 10 years ago or so. If you looked at the charts, you'll see that every few months it was a spectacular move. And what they were doing is that they were paying their, uh, their, their CEO or some of their, their accountant, one of the big people in the firm, via stock purchases and the stock was going soaring up and maybe that person sold took the money and you saw this every three months i mean it's just it was like clockwork all right well that's it you're going to have steve rhodes you're going to have uh dave white and then who's on for the show to this afternoon i think larry pesaventa that should be one no, no steve rhodes and dave white three o'clock to four p.m uh, have a wonderful day i'll see you tomorrow hey check out my opening call hope you find it beneficial and profitable i'll be back tomorrow have a great day